Hi, Mr. Ray here. Uh, in this video, we're not going to do a lot of programming. Uh, in the first part, I'm going to run a demo of a more complex maneuver than we've been doing in the testing and show you what happens that are, are demonstrated at different speeds. After that, I'm going to do some discussion on uh, how to time this repeat loop so that you know how fast it's running. And also, I'm going to just show you a little bit about how I debug the program. The debugging capability on this is not very good. Okay, so we'll move on to the demo part. So I've set the robot up. I'm going to run a more complex uh, demonstration than I have in the previous videos. Over on the left, you can see the program. It's a succession of gyro nav movements. It's going to drive down near the uh, bar. And then it's going to re do a reverse turn, turning 90 degrees and go under the bar. And then it will drive backwards over to the uh, edge of the target area for the bochia. Then it will turn 90 degrees to the right, come back towards the this end of the board. And then it will make a 45 degree turn towards the home area and drive toward it and then when it gets in that general area it will make another 45 degree turn and come straight toward the uh, starting area of the for the robot i'm going to run this one at the speed of 30. i'll run it again at 50 and again at 70 just so you can get a feel for what happens we can improve its performance at high speed if we incorporate the acceleration uh, terms that I'll show you in the next uh, video. So let's go at 30. Oh, I've got it set at zero. Now, the other thing I've done for my robot, I've increased the gain of the gyro to 1.3. Uh, you notice the turn limit is set to 50, which means it's going to do pivot turns. So let's go at 30. Let me make this bigger. And here it goes. Okay, so now I'm going to change it to 50, speed 50, I'll reset it up. Uh, you'll notice I have a jig that I use to ensure that I've got the robot set up. And I set it up so it's parallel to the wall and just barely inside the watch area. So, get this out of here. You don't want to leave the jig normally because there's enough drag sometimes it will uh, cause problems. So here we go at 50. Okay, and now we'll do it at 70. I think you'll see that the robot is very touchy uh, with the gyro gain at 1.3. So let's see what it does. Okay, so you saw that it, do, I'll call it doing the hula. That meant the gain was a bit too high. So that should do it for this demo. Now I want to demonstrate uh, a couple of things. We're gonna talk about the timing and we're going to talk about debugging a little bit. So first I want to talk about timing. And when I'm, when I'm thinking about timing here in particular, I want to know how fast this repeat loop executes. I would like to see it stay above 100 hertz or faster because then I don't have to worry about the stability because it's running too slow. If it runs too slow, it will affect the stability while it's driving with the gyro. I want to measure this and then in the next video I will be adding a parallel program and there's quite a bit of time penalty on the 
meaning that this executes much slower when I start using parallel features. And some of the parallel things really slow it down. We've already, in the last video in this series, or in a previous one, or his last one, we put a reset of the timer right in front of this loop, which means it set back to zero and then starts running. We have introduced a variable that's a count will increment every time this thing loops. So now what I want to do is I want to know what that time is. And actually what I want to know is what the how fast it's executing. So I'll grab me a display. Now I've measured these and I get timings anywhere from one to two or three milliseconds for one of these to execute. In this case, it really doesn't make much difference. We'll run this loop long enough that any uh, anything lost from setting up the loop and for writing this out uh, isn't uh, isn't a huge penalty. Now this this one and one are coordinate x y coordinates on the screen on the robot. One one would be start right in the upper left corner. Uh, the only problem with that is it kind of, it's, you can get into shadows there, and so on the camera that we're all bringing us up in a little bit, it's, it gets harder to read. So I'm going to say 5, which will move it from the left edge. I'm going to say 25. Now to make it easier to read, I'm going to change it to use large black letters. So now we've got that in there, and what do I want to put in here? Well, what I want to do, let's pull these apart. I want to divide count by time, and I want to display that. That will be the rate at which the program executes. So we've got it all there. I previously pulled this off. This normally is up here. Uh, if I do that, the very few milliseconds after I write this on the screen, this will stop the program and the display will go away. So I'm going to pull this off so the program doesn't actually stop running and whatever I write here will stay displayed. Now let's see, what have we got up here? Doesn't really matter, some speed, well that's fine. Angle zero, minus 25 for five. Okay, so that's is the only difference now between what we had at the end of the last video uh, is, is these few changes we've made. I'm going to bring the uh, I'm going to bring the picture up, and hopefully you'll be able to see this. The robot has got its front end raised so the wheels aren't touching, so it won't go anywhere. So when I run this, I should get an execution time. Okay, 279 hertz through 279 times a second. So that's really not too bad. Now, just to give you an idea of what happens, I'm going to pull out from the events. Remember, it was 279. Another thing you might, uh, might try is if you're trying to run multiple scenarios, programs, whatever you want to call them, for different missions, I might be tempted to use one of these. If I, if I have this, then uh, as long as I don't make it center, so when the left button is pressed, then this program stack would run. So I, I could use these to use the buttons to allow me to have four or five different programs running runnable and so what i would do is i would start the uh, main program and just set up a few things and then i could press uh, the any one of the four buttons around the center button to start a different program and so that would be relatively simple i could use the middle one but i have to be really careful if i use the middle one or when i start the main program it will go right on and start the other now I could get a fifth program. I could just put one right in here that runs right after the setup, and then I could use the buttons to start four additional ones. But let's just look at what happens with one of them. Okay, so we're setting at 255. I have no program here. I just have the start of that program. Fill that.
and I went to 149. So there's a big penalty time-wise on this loop. So if I put four of these in, well, I'll just stop the video a minute and I'll put four in and I'll show you what happens. So I put a total of four of them here, left, right, up, and down. So this is four different conditions. So let's see what it does to the timing. So I went to 101 hertz, so it might still be acceptable. I will present a video later on a different way to create a master program. You can run uh, multiple different, I'll call them scenarios or programs for your FLL, FLL missions, and there's not a significant time penalty. It will use my blocks, it will use the buttons on, on the uh, front of the brick to make the selection. Now I wanted to briefly talk about debugging. The only tool that I've found is this display. Look through the display. I use this one. You can use some of the others. So this one will write, uh, in this case right now, would write EV3. And this is a location on the screen. Uh, the one is a horizontal position in pixels. This one, next one is the vertical position in pixels. Now, because of the shadows around the edge of the screen, I want to use something like 5 to move it away from the left side and uh, say 10 to move it down. And so now, if I were going to, and then I want to change this to a large black, so it would put the large characters like you saw on the timing. So now, how would I use this? Well, I could stick it in, oh, anywhere, say here, and then I could write something in it. So what would I write? Well, maybe I want to write, get some variables. I could write count. That would tell me how many times this loop had run. Now, if I'm debugging, probably what I'm looking for is, uh, did it run at all? So if the count's zero, then I know this did not run. Uh, if it didn't run, then what would I do? Well, let's see. If it didn't run, then it would mean that this repeat loop, uh, one of these conditions was satisfied immediately. So that B degrees was greater than motor degrees, or C degrees was greater than motor degrees without the loop even running. So B degrees should be zero when it enters, C degrees should be zero, and motor degrees should be equal to the rotation we specify well, here times 360. So let's just pick one. And I'll pick uh, motor rotations if I can find it. I guess it's motor degrees, not rotation. And let's see what it is. So I've got my robot running with its wheels off the ground. And if I look at that, I see 720. And I had two rotations and I multiplied with 360, so 720 is the right answer. The motor degrees is okay, so let's try B degrees. Because B degrees should be the final value coming out of here. When it's finished looping, you'll see the last value of B degrees. So let's run it. 688. So you can actually see that up here. Now we've got a, no, we have got to turn. Well, I've got the robot in my hand right now. Uh, so I can read the numbers off. And uh, you'll see that the C motor ran 720. Well, that must be the B, C degrees must be okay. So that looks like that is running okay. Let's say we did something like I did when I was doing one of the earlier ones. I copied, duplicated this line, put it in here, and then forgot to make that C degree. Now, the interesting thing is the program runs okay for one time. But now if I come back in and I do this, let's say 0, 30, I'll say 1. And then I'm going to put a little bit of a weight in here. So go back up to the control. Pick up a weight, 
couple of seconds. And I want to stop the motors in between. So I don't stop the motor coming out of here. The motor will keep running. So I realize you can't see the robot, so I will have to tell you what it says. So what I should see is whatever I'm looking for here. And then what I'm going to look for is C degrees this time. And I think you can see from what I did up above where I put the arrow back in, that C degrees does not get reset. So let's run this. Okay, here we go. First gyro nav is running. It says 719. Waiting and waiting and waiting and nothing. You notice C degrees, well, you don't notice, but C degrees stayed 719. So what that would tell me is C degrees should have been zero. And if this loop didn't run, it should still be zero. So that means there's a problem with C degrees getting reset. So if I come back up and I'll find this problem. Now, by inspection of your program, you might have found that problem. If you didn't, like I didn't, because I thought it was something else, uh, this will be the final telltale thing. But you have to think about what the value should be, how, how you could take the problem and break it down. Maybe you wanted to see uh, if it wasn't turning correctly or it wasn't turning at all, you'd want to see what the final value of the steer command was. So anyway, that should give you some idea on how to, how to devote. As again, this is the only thing I know that you have. Now, if you go on to Spike Prime later, you'll find that over on the right, you can display all of your variables in real time as it's running. That makes life a lot easier as far as debugging. And then if you bring in, uh, it has extensions that you can add to the language and you get a, um, I think it's called line display or something like that, which is a graphing tool so that you can put graph back on your, your PC uh, and you can graph any of the sensors to see what they're doing uh, versus time. It's really pretty cool. Maybe they'll put it in classroom. I doubt it. All right. So that's the end of this is part of the debugging thing. See the, re the remainder of the series, you can look in the LEGO Classroom Navigation series on Raise Robotics. You can see all of, the, all of the videos that I've completed for this thing. So be sure and subscribe. I'll look forward to seeing you the next time.